Hello again, everyone. Um, it's another podcast with me by myself, and I'm going to try and be as quiet as possible because, well, technically I'm not by myself. Philip is here. He's just asleep in the bedroom. Um, and I'm not going to wake him. It's five o'clock in the afternoon. He's been asleep for a good three hours. We all deal with stresses in our own particular ways, and he is a stress sleeper and eater. Um, when he's fully stressed, he just goes to bed and just escapes from the world. And many people can understand that. I'm completely the opposite. I get stressed and I quit eating and I can't sleep for anything. However, last night after my podcast about him going to work finally for the first time in three weeks, it wasn't that long after I was finished that he came home. I think it was about 8.30 and I didn't expect to see him until about 10 o'clock. But there he was, and um, just this sullen look on his face, just one of just absolute disappointment. And I asked him what was going on, and he said, you know, they, don't, they don't really have me there for any reason other than in case they get busy. And if they don't get busy, they're just sending me home. I was there for two and a half hours. And for the rest of the evening, there was just not a whole lot of reaction from him. He just wanted to kind of look at the television and just kind of vacate in a way, which is not like him. He's a very engaging person. However, I will, I will have to say that I understand the nature of his disappointment because for the last three weeks, he has had his phone on charge nonstop waiting for them to call him because they were only going to call in essential personnel, people that matter in order to get this restaurant up and running again and at least doing to-go orders or <clears throat> curbsides or deliveries, you know what I mean. Anyway, he was so excited when he finally got that phone call for two days. He was just a big beaming mess of madness. Just everything was pleasant. Oh, look, that bird out there has a story to tell. Oh, look, the grasshopper in the tree. Everything was lovely. And then he came home from work and they had basically relegated or delegated or whatever elegated there is to him one of the lowest um, positions possible where they basically told him they don't need him. He's not essential. He's just there in case things get scary and they have an extra set of hands. And I don't think they... Um, they understood what devastating blow that was to him because he had been spending before all the corona crap went down he had been spending money and time and tests and travels and efforts that you cannot imagine going into the management program he passed all those things that gave him a raise and now shit hits the fan and he's practically nobody and they told him basically for the next week at least, the most he's going to get is maybe 10 to 15 hours. So I'm not bothering my husband right now. I want him to sleep because I want him to just, if he needs to just go into his own head for a minute and disappear, I'm okay with that. I just hope that while he's there, you know, stewing in his own misery that he at least gets to the pearl and that is you can't find your own value in someone else's eyes you just can't they don't need you guess what though there are a million other people that do need you right now and you can find a way to make yourself validated you can make yourself right now find a purpose that you didn't think you had before his life as a cook is probably over. My life as a knitter is definitely over. But it doesn't mean that we don't have new lives that will spring from this moment. He is one exceptional horticulturalist. He really is. He knows plants inside and out. And I'm one hell of a good writer, I think. And if I can kind of tone back this Tennessee Williams kind of voice, then maybe I could do narrations myself. Granted, with some better equipment. But, um, you know, I, I mentioned in a couple of blog posts ago that I, I wanted to emphasize hope as much as I could. And I know that so many of you are also in the same situation right now where, you know, you, you've got $180 in the bank account 
and you're you're not getting any hours and if you are you're you're only getting a few but that's only part of the problem the greater part of the problem is having so many people right now feel worthless that they're not needed it's kind of cute when they say things like non-essential you're like yeah well whatever and then you kind of realize when the bills are coming in and you don't have any money coming in how how terrifying a term non-essential really is so i just wanted to give all of you a heads up on that particular situation and i am fervid in my belief that if you see the darkest hints on the news or on your social media about how this is going to destroy all of mankind, we're never going to get out of this, please just swipe it or turn it off or do what it is that you have to do and focus on something a lot more positive. Norman Fitz appeal and his The Power of Positive Thinking, I'm not saying we're going to you know, wish away the virus. But there is a certain element of courage that is required with hope. And there's a certain amount of ambition and desire that is required of hope as well. Hope requires that you get out of bed, brush your teeth, take a shower, and find something new to do. You have to look, some, you have to look for something to look forward to. Otherwise, this is for nothing. These are those moments that stress us as a society and as a, a, even a, a relationship. But you can't look at it every single moment with these really dark, I hate the media for what they're doing right now and I'm trying to level out my point without being angry, but it seems to me that the more that the ads are larger than the headlines, the worse that this is going to get. They've made a, a career out of fear for decades, but now they really have an opportunity to make some serious money off of people's pain. Don't let them do that. Don't look for someone else's value in their eyes. Find it in yourself and realize you are a valuable and wonderful person. They may not need him. Somebody else does. I'm first in line. Thanks. Talk to you next time.